So today is the last day of June. It's June 30th. It's about 7.30 in the morning. You can see the morning sun coming up over there. So the morning sun comes up and then all of these plants get shielded from the afternoon sun because I keep the umbrella up. But I wanted to do a little update of all my potted plants up here on my back porch. So we have the impatience here looking good. There's one plant in this little pot here and it filled it out really nicely. Um, you can see the mess <laughs> from the impatience. Uh, impatience are self-cleaning plants, which means you don't have to deadhead them. They drop their own petals and that's why there's a ton of impatient petals all over my table here but from now on so this is my third year of growing impatients i absolutely love them they are a shade plant um for me at least every time i put them in the sun they've just completely fried or baked in the sun but i've learned now that just one plant I used to stuff like two or three in a pot like this, but just one plant fills out like a really big pot. So you can get, well at least I can, a pack like the beginning of June, late May, you can get like a pack of four um, flowers, like impatiens, begonias, um, maybe some sun patients, and just for three bucks. And then you have, you know, just put one plant per pot and it looks great. Fills it out really nicely. And then we have my watermelon coleus here. Looks really good aside from the pest damage. This looks like Japanese beetle damage. You can see it's starting to flower. Has a little flower stalk there. But yeah, these guys are doing great. These are the salmon impatiens love those i love salmon colored flowers and then we have the patchouli here this is the one that i brought um up here it was out in the garden it was getting fried uh looks a lot a lot better since i have it up here in the shade i've been harvesting some leaves off of this for my skincare products. I've said before that I have a website. It's nightfallapothecary.com. I make my own soaps, lotions, um, bath bombs, bubble bars, uh, all types of different skincare, body care, bath treats, stuff like that. So I've been harvesting my patchouli to make some soaps and stuff like that with oils. Then we have the New Guinea Impatiens here. I always get New Guinea Impatiens and Sun Patients mixed up. This is an absolutely gorgeous plant. This is probably my favorite plant that I have. As you can see all of those gorgeous blooms starting to open up. And this is another New Guinea Impatiens. One plant per pot. And another one here, starting to get a ton of buds on it. Then we have another patchouli plant. I've had this one uh, in a pot on the porch the whole time. And it's bigger than the one that was out in the garden, but this one's starting to catch up, definitely. So here is another impatience plant. There's two of them in this pot, actually. I could have got away with one, I'm sure, but look how much that filled out absolutely gorgeous i think instead of doing my morning glories in the hanging pots next year i'm going to do some impatience and then i'm going to hang them on my front porch so they can still be in the shade i think that would look really really pretty like draping over uh, a hanging pot and then we have the scented geranium here the citronella scented geranium getting huge really like this and it smells so good it, it smells like lemon cello like soap it doesn't really smell like um like uh like deet or anything like that but it says eight plus hours a day of sun 
but I've kept it like in a sh in a shade situation just like all of these other plants and it's been fine and then we have so I planted a bunch of zinnias this year and they all have been at least the ones next to my porch down on the ground they've all been like white I really don't care for white flowers they're just it just it's boring to me um, I like bright like striking vibrant color flowers I'm sure that'll change as I get older but since I'm relatively new to gardening I like all the bright eye-catching things but yeah these were the cactus zinnias and they've all been white I don't even know if I've seen a white zinnia before but so yeah I pruned my zinnia plant uh, like I pruned my basil so that it would get more branches and be fuller more buds so that's why I pulled this guy off. But we have the celosia there. This is my record with celosia. Usually I can't keep it alive for more than a week. <laughs> I've had these for well over a month. And they've been loving these pots here. And I did my own soil mix. Then we have the catnip. It's growing back. Uh, my cat Salem. She discovered the catnip and took a, a good chunk off of it so it was just pretty much just like a stem left but it came back she uh, obviously likes it she approves she's had a nice little taste <laughs> the catnip is part of the mint family so i mean it is it will grow aggressively um yeah it does really good in any condition and then we have my micro dwarf tomato this is the orange hat variety i got these seeds from baker creek this plant will only get about six to nine inches tall it's awesome if you don't have a lot of space and you still want to grow like a little tiny tomato little cute little thing you could um just grow this inside you could probably just grow this inside in a window it grows so easily and the tomatoes on it so they're little orange cherry tomatoes and they are super sweet super delicious had some last year loved them um but a pack of these seeds were like five bucks when i got them and that was like two and a half maybe three years ago uh so yeah very expensive little seed and then of course the celosia here you can see the marigold now this marigold vine isn't coming from out of my hanging basket here. This vine right here is actually from, did I say marigold vine? I meant morning glory if I did. But this morning glory is actually planted in the ground. And you can see it's just taking off and grabbing a hold of everything. This is why I say don't plant morning glory in your garden because it will grab a hold of everything nearby it and choke it out but then we have i brought up the habanero so that we could water it more often so this per my husband's request this was planted in pure miracle grow potting soil it wasn't my mix of like potting soil and like organic potting soil and peat moss he wanted to try the miracle grow and man this plant if you look at you see the the difference in green i don't want to get too close to this sugar rush <laughs> i don't know if you saw that but that was my hummingbird scared the absolute crap out of me oh you can see her for him at the feeder so adorable they sound just like a bee or like an insect when they get close and it just scares the crap out of me every time look how adorable love 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 those little birds they make me so happy when I see them they come every year so as I was saying, I don't want to get too close to this sugar rush <laughs> peach plant because there's like a really 
weird looking bug on it and it's terrifying i think this is, you can see it right there i believe this is called an assassin bug which is makes it even more scary just from the name uh but yeah check that guy out Not trying to get too close to him. I don't know if he can do any damage, but if it just sticks to me, I'll have a meltdown. But yeah, this habanero was planted in miracle Grow potting soil. And look at the difference in green. So this is the sugar rush peach plant planted in my propri proprietary blend of soil. <laughs> the peat moss and potting soil. And then this is planted in just plain miracle Grow. Really, really healthy looking. Really nice. I'm not opposed. I know a lot of gardeners, like especially organic gardeners. Uh, there's a big debate within the gardening community. And a, a pretty big hatred I've seen for like miracle Grow products because they're not organic. Um, they are chemical fertilizers and that really doesn't make sense because everything is a chemical humans are chemicals but um i'm not opposed to using synthetic fertilizers i just think i mean i personally do organic gardening because it benefits the soil life it promotes you know good biodiversity in the soil um, healthy soil because it has a lot of organic matter in it a lot of compost um, but I I think on my tomatoes and peppers I might give uh, some miracle Grow fertilizer a try I use a fish fertilizer which is a 511 NPK and you know the 5 stands for nitrogen and then you have phosphate and potassium so nitrogen helps the plant with leafy growth and then phosphate is good for like fruiting um, or is it potassium so potassium I believe is good for like you know the fruiting the buds of the flowers and then the phosphate is good for the rooting so it's up down all around as I've heard people say the NPK up nitrogen for the plants down phosphate for the rooting system all around potassium for the fruiting leaf root everything but the fish fertilizer is a 511 and i want to up the potassium and phosphate um but it's kind of hard to do that organically you can use blood meal or bone meal but then since they're organic like granular fertilizers it takes them a long time to break down but I don't know. I might give Miracle Grow a little try on my just my tomatoes and peppers, maybe just one bed and see if they do any better than you know the organic way of gardening. Uh it's not something that I would use all of the time because like I said I do want to promote good soil life and uh if you repeatedly use synthetic fertilizers it can have an impact on your soil life so i would definitely still use a lot of organic fertilizers but we have the red reuben basil right here it's filling out really good since i pruned it more celosia then we have my little herb and tomato thing here i don't know if i've ever said this before but i did get these pots from the dollar tree uh, i think last year is when i got them um, so I have some, I can't figure out there, so I know there's two cilantro and one parsley, so maybe these are two cilantro and this is the parsley, but then this kind of looks like cilantro, so maybe these are cilantro and this is parsley, anyways, two cilantros, one parsley, can't figure out which is which, uh, I hate cilantro, it tastes like dish, dish soap to me. Uh, but my husband likes all of those, so I grow them. And I let it, I'm let i letting this flower just for the 
pollinators, the bees, the bugs. They really, really like my herby flowers, I've noticed. So, but then when you let your herbs go to flower, uh, like especially dill and basil, if you do let them go to flower, it sends out a hormone within the plant that actually changes the flavor. So then it's not that like intense, good herby flavor that you want. So that's why we always try to prevent when we want it, when we're going to eat it, we try to prevent the basil and the dill from flowering because then it just won't taste as good and you don't want that. So we have some more micro dwarf tomatoes. This is another orange hat. You can see a bunch of flowers on it. Adorable little plant. Next year I want to try a bunch of different dwarf tomatoes. Have another one over here with a bunch of flowers and then this little guy catching up. And then a cute little celosia plant in there. I had a bunch of extra celosia after I planted those baskets which I made myself. It's much, much, much cheaper to make your own decorative uh, flower pots than to spend like 30, and I've even seen them up to like 50 to $60, even at a nursery, just for some decorative plants. Just get a cheap pot, some potting soil, and some flowers that you like, boom. These pots were from Dollar Tree, really, really cheap. But yeah, all the extra solution that I had, I just stuck everywhere and all through the garden. I showed on my garden update that my uh, ground cherries here in this little container got eaten, but I do have a little seedling right there emerging, which doesn't matter now. I don't even know if I have enough time in my growing season to grow a ground cherry from this stage, but we still do have this one. so. This is our pretty much our last hope. If something happens to this guy, we ain't getting no ground cherries this year. So, but let's go check out. Oh, another thing. So I've been going around this morning with, I have a little cup of dish soap here. I've been getting all of the Japanese beetles on my morning glory that are causing all of these holes. I've been going up to the leaf knocking them off into this I only got one so far but you can see in a cup of soapy water so they fall into the water and then the soap sticks to them and they can't get out and uh, if you do organic gardening one of the best ways to get rid of pests is just pick them off by hand <laughs> so that's what I've been doing here's the larkspur it's forming a lot of um little seeds as you can see this thing drops seeds every year and grows back I've I planted it the first year and it comes back every single year on its own you can see a ton of the cypress vine one right there a couple back there these are zinnias that I transplanted from the baking tray you can see this huge morning glory this one is in the ground and it's starting to wrap around everything so here's the morning glory that i planted in the hanging basket um yes i always say this i'll always stress this morning glory is a beast it is a bully it will overtake everything by the end of summer this right here will all be completely engulfed in giant morning glory uh leaves and vines so here is another zinnia. We have another cypress vine back there that I plant for my hummingbirds. The cypress vine gets little trumpet shaped flowers and my hummingbirds absolutely love it. Their little beaks fit right down into those flowers. Hummingbirds love like uh, trumpet shaped flowers. And then I have a little tomato that I stuck back there. It was a volunteer that I took out of the garden. I have some gladiolus bulbs that I just stuck in there. I had a bunch extra. Those are actually from last year. I still had a bunch of bulbs left over from last year, and they actually came up. So we have, as you can see, this side gets morning sun. That's why everything looks a little bit more uh, lush and bigger over here. This side gets morning sun. 
this side gets afternoon sun. Plants absolutely love morning sun, I've learned. So this is the uh, morning glory in this basket. A little bit smaller, a little goofy looking. I think I might have over fertilized it. You don't even need to fertilize morning glory. It does perfect without anything at all. Um, it can grow in any type of <laughs> growing conditions, I've learned. Yeah, but look how much smaller these leaves are. And then we have another volunteer tomato that I stuck there. It's actually doing pretty good right there, and it doesn't get a whole lot of sun. So we'll see how that does. A bunch of more, a bunch of morning glory seedlings. And then we have the zinnias, more of these from the baking tray. This one right here, this is the one that I took that white one off of. So the white one came out of the top here. I clipped that off and now uh, more will see a little shoot coming out here. So more of it will branch off. Actually, so the stem came right there and I cut that off and now this guy's going to start blooming here soon then we have the little kajari melons that i stuck over here for fun and uh, another cypress vine so that is the little update of all of the porch plants you can see some of the i don't want to get close to it because of that creepy looking bug but you can see the peppers hanging off of the sugar rush peach there's a ton of peppers on this plant and all i've given it was fish fertilizer and then a little bit of granular fertilizer in the soil mix that that's it it's been doing pretty good so i'll do another update when another update on these guys when some morning glory buds open up and hopefully we'll have some colorful zinnias hopefully they won't all be white um, but yeah, I will see you then.